Hello, everybody. My name is Troy Nelson, and here we are, live on KEXP at home. There's a heat wave going on here in Seattle, but uh, I'm feeling so much better because we are with Noga Erez. And Noga, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me, KEXP. Yep. Absolutely. We've been loving the new record. I've been loving everything that you've put out. So thank you so much for uh, blessing us with all these great sounds. Thank you. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're about to see a performance that you recorded for uh, all the KEXP community out there. Um, as for a little backdrop, uh, where where did you uh, record this session? Well, I was uh, lucky enough to be able to record this session in uh, the Tel Aviv Museum of Art. And this is the part that kind of connects between the old section and the modern art section. So it's like, I think it kind of, I don't know, maybe it has some kind of a deeper meaning to it, but it's just a really beautiful space and they let me film it there. So it's cool. And it sounds fantastic. And I'm uh, yeah. excited to share it with the rest of the world. So here you go. This is Noga Eras live on KEXP at home. Can we get some more subs so he can feel it? I'm no money, I'm no bunny, I'm no slubby boy. I'm never back for no money. Fun, fun, funny, you run for me. No irony, I put no one, nobody. Chop, chop, chop it right hand, chop it like a big bugger. You had the mic, man, you can't drop it. Dumb, 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 me wants nobody. I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, sit though. Echo. Crazy. Thank you. My name is uh, Noga Erez. We're so happy to be doing this uh, KXP session. Let's go. Oh, wow. 
watch your back, I'll break your neck, I'll pop a can of iron like and paint you black and name and black the list I'm keeping over past the others, keep the numbers fake and cut the ring so every day I'm low until I blow blow Big and hell I call me that's the snow Money leather puppets run the show Underrated calling me the show And I let my be we have to go see you later underrated silly XP. So uh, a little over a month ago, we released um, our second album. Um, it's called Kids, and it's been a crazy journey ever since we released it. Um, and this next song, am I right? Yeah. This next song is the opening song of the album. It's called CP.
Rosé. <lacht> What the fuck? Okay. Shaky. Feeling kind of shaky. Okay. Well, luckily, this is our last song. Um, my name is Noga Erez. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for having us, KEXP. We love you. And this is Fire Kites. You try to stick a filthy finger Talking basic bitches got you as far as the glitter Glitter, 
thousand ways to glory should be self-explanatory But you need tutorials to make it slicker Water dripping long enough could even pierce in fucking rocks Pointing which directions I won't let you slip between the cracks I slip with enemies and friends if you or me won't want ya Whatever works be sure it's kosher, kosher Fantastic performance. Sounds amazing. Thank you once again, Noga, for capturing this one-of-a-kind session for all the KEXP listeners. Yeah. I've got some, uh, I got a couple questions for you. And I had read recently that you got to do your first live show in front of actual human beings since lockdown. I mean, what, what did that feel like after, <laughs> after all of this? Um, wow. I felt, I just felt rusty as hell. That's, that's the honest <laughs> truth. I felt like I wasn't, I wasn't in shape, to be honest. Um, you know, I, I, I started with this really bad, um, anxiety, you know, to, to, to perform in front of people. So for me to get over it, it took a bunch of, you know, I don't, I don't know, like dozens of shows and then, this break kind of, I feel like it brought me back to not to, not to ground zero, but it certainly did. Yeah. I came back to feeling very, very shaky before shows. And, and luckily I've had <laughs> tens of shows since then because, you know, what, what the world is about to experience and I'm coming from the future, um, is that, um, when the shows are coming back, it's like people are going to shows like, crazy like shows here are sold out like crazy and every single show is just so extremely exciting and and unique so um so yeah it's it's like an extra it's it it i feel like we're almost lucky to have had this break from live shows if i can say that yeah i hear you it, it, i haven't been to a show yet but i have been to a couple public functions that are you know like sort of Small, yeah. but still 
being in around human beings, um, you know, more than four. And uh, yeah. I just am like, it, it's still a little like uh, odd and I'm just kind of reacclimating, I guess, to whatever, <laughs> whatever this new normal is. So I can only imagine for an artist too, just yeah, strange. yeah, definitely. Kind of just getting back into it, right? It's really, it's really hard to get back to it. But, but at the same time, coming from someone who's been like that for um, almost three months, you just forget that you know this whole thing has ever happened. You know, everything comes back to what it was before, and I feel like we have this nature of um, getting used to things really quickly. You know, it's the human surviving nature. I've talked to, you know, obviously a bunch of other artists during the pandemic and uh, a large handful of them said that they just didn't really feel inspired to record anything during lockdown. And I thought that was interesting because I would think, oh, this is a great time for people to, to, you know, just hone in and record a bunch of stuff since there's nothing else to do. What was your experience with creativity during this? I was extremely creative during this time. I mean, I... Well, basically what happened with kids, which is, you know, the album that I've released, um, um, in March was that it was supposed to be released almost a year before that we were, um, heading towards kind of starting the mixing phase of the album. And we felt like we had a really cool album. Um, but then, you know, everything happened and everything stopped and it took us, I think around, two weeks to get out of, you know, the anxiety, the anxiety that came along with, you know, what the fuck is happening with the world into a phase of, uh, we really have to figure out what, what to do because we seem to be having more time than we thought. So we either mix this thing really fast and use the time that we have to record new songs or we, um, improve the ones that we have. And the decision was to, to continue to perfect kids. And I feel like for us, what it made was, you know, it it made the whole difference. I mean, people just love this album so much and I feel like they love it for the reasons that, you know, we gave it time, we gave the music time. So I feel like it deserves it even more. Uh, the production is stellar. When I first heard the song Views, I was like, wow. I, I immediately wanted to hear it on headphones because it sounds yeah. so good. Who Who is the guest on that song? Who's doing that chorus? It's so it's so catchy. Well, Ori Russo, who is my partner in life and my partner in music and also the person who sings the chorus and is the producer of this project. And we work on the music together on every single aspect. Um, he's you know, a genius and I'm so lucky to have him as my partner. And he's, he's the dude in the views chorus that, you know, that song has done a lot for us. And I'm, I'm really happy that we got to, we got to, to do it. Oh yeah. Immediately when I heard it, I'm like, this is going to be something. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) Uh, I I love when that happens. And I know that you're in, uh, obviously all artists are inspired by many things, but I've heard you reference a certain lyric, and mm. that lyric is somebody co- uh, somebody came in and they broke the lock. We didn't even notice we were stuck. What does that sentiment mean to you, the importance of that lyric? I felt like, well, this this is a line from the song No News on TV, and this song is a clear pandemic song. I mean, we didn't want to say that about it but it's we we have to admit that that's what it is because when we when we realize that everything is um actually stopping and we started to get you know locked inside the the studio and work on music there was a moment where we felt that um everything is so quiet and peaceful you know in a way what's so strange about this is was that Everything around us was so peaceful, but then our phones kept sending us like this really horrifying notifications about how the world is like, I don't know, ending. There's like the apocalypse is, is happening right now. And, and for me, it just felt like so, so interesting in a way to see how 
Well, I can only speak for myself. Like for, for me as a, as a human being, I'm so used to be, um, in the chase of things and running after something and trying to, to make it in, you know, with my work and, and to, to make money and everything. And then, and then the moment that someone sets me free, you know, gives me time to be, you know, in this space with myself, to be connected with myself, it, it terrifies me. I mean, it gets me to a point that I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm scared of boredom. I'm scared of this, this quiet and this nothingness. And, um, and it's like, yeah, like when someone, when someone breaks open, you know, a lock of this jail that you were in, but you were not even aware of, I think, I think like this is a really, um, you know, it, it, it tells about the way that we live our lives, you know, in the modern world, I guess. So true. And you had mentioned uh, cell phones. I had a question for you. What would you say that the voice memo app on your phone is? How crucial is that in uh, you creating music? Oh, it's like the probably the number one tool. I mm-hmm. I realized, and one of the things that are great about making a second record and um, doing it with, you know, in in an in a loving environment was that I realized that. I don't like the studio. I don't like the recording studio. For me, the recording studio is a very intimidating place. It's a very not creative space for me. And it was really hard for me to admit that because I felt like, what, what is it saying about me as a musician that I don't like to be stuck in it, in a studio for hours and hours? But then, you know, Ori, who, who's always so incredibly sensitive about these things, who's my partner in all of this was, was smart enough to tell me maybe you need to be creative in other places. And then he, you know, he just gave me the key and I, and I stepped right out of the, you know, studio <laughs> and started creating in, uh, in other places, like while walking, while being in movement. And, you know, so the voice memos are, yeah, a really important tool for me. Mm. I, I too am very sensitive to boredom. Like I am, yeah. I also am, am scared of it, and I get bored pretty easily. And and I I've made some records myself, and I have to say that I find the studio incredibly boring. <laughs> and here it is: you're making something that's going to live forever, and that you're going to be so happy with. And this is how I feel. It makes me feel bad because I, here I am, just bored in the studio, and I'm I'm kind of complaining about it. And then when it's done, and I listen back, and and people are enjoying it, and I and it sounds great. I'm like, ah, it was worth it, but I'm yeah. still bored. <laughs> yeah, and you know, also the thing about the the life, I think life as a creative now, from you know the the very specific perspective that I have is that I think I think probably like three percent of the time you, you are happy with what you're doing. You love what you're doing. You, you, you just finished a session and you have a song and, you know, and that feeling is what keeps the other 97% so, um, attractive, you know, but you, you need to know, I mean, that's how it is for me anyway. And for many people that I know, you need to know that you're going to go, you're going to go to work in order to fail <laughs> most of the time <laughs> for you to be able to, to actually succeed in what you're doing. But, but I have to say that the same way you, you feel about, you know, listening back to it and then having other people re- resonate with it. You know, the moment that you realize that you really have a song and that the song is actually good as I wouldn't replace that feeling with anything else. And I would be chasing that feeling. I feel like, um, my whole life. Right. Do you do you remember the the song that just really turned on the light switch in your head that made you want to do this particular sound? Of course, when we're growing up, we have a whole bunch of influences or we love this artist or love. But as far as the sound that you create, do you remember the song or the artist that turned that light switch on? Um, I mean, it's it's the, the, um, the type questions that are searching for one moment or one, um, uh, one scenario in life are always kind of difficult for me. And I feel like this is also, it's not because these questions are not the most interesting ones, but it's because 
Um, and I think that you could hear that in my music. It's not, you can say that it's very cohesive, you know, one song can, can fit and you know, the, the songs are together in the same album and they do seem to feel like they're from the same family, but, but the songs are so different and so influenced by, by, by different things. And, um, so it's hard for me to say, but I, I do, I can say that there was one moment with, um, yoga by Bjork that I realized that I want to explore electronic music. You know, I had a moment with, I, it's, it's written yoga. So I don't know if it's yoga or yoga or, but, but it's a beautiful, beautiful piece. And then a moment, a moment with, with James Blake and later on with Kendrick Lamar with, um, to paint a butterfly that kind of, you know, with all my, with all the gravity that went towards, you know, electronic music to paint a butterfly brought me back to my roots, which are, you know, heavily in, in jazz music. So it brought me back to some acoustic, some, some sound of wood and, um, uh, Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, speaking of non-electronic music, how influential is PJ Harvey to you? Extremely influential. Um, I mean, PJ Harvey, every time I speak about her, I feel like um, this is just way beyond a musical um, influence. It's just um, the moment that I discovered her music was mon monumental for me because up until that point, I used to listen to music that was um, unreachable for me, you know, music that I was able to appreciate um, on, a, on a level, but, but I never felt that I can truly make music on my own until I heard PJ Harvey. So I feel like that tells a lot about, you know, how sometimes empowering or in, inspiring someone is um to to let them know that they can do something by doing something that doesn't feel like it's out of this world something about her simplicity her authenticity the fact that you know you don't hear her musicianship so much through the music but you hear her weakness and her vulnerability um i feel like that was the you, you know, the one thing that was like, I can do this thing myself. And, and do it for a long time because she's still, all these decades later, is still making fantastic, fantastic. music. Mm -hmm. it, it blows my mind every time. I mean, she, she's a, a legend. Yeah, I and, definitely uh, agree. Unbelievable. And Noga, once again, we've just been loving every single thing that you have released. And I know that uh, Ori was going to be part of my last question, but we touched on Ori and uh, his brilliance uh, as a producer and a musician. And that is so cool that you two, you guys are lucky to have each other. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's a magical uh, duo. Oh, yeah, for sure. And mm -hmm. it's not, I mean, mm -hmm. I know, I, I know that every single day. And uh, it's a part of being... Uh, Part of being smart is being grateful, and I try to be grateful, especially for the fact that I have Ori in my life. You know, finding your musical partner is not an easy thing to do. That's so true. And uh, once again, hopefully we're going to be hearing some new stuff in the near future. But believe me, everything that you've got out there, I'm still listening to it. So I can wait patiently, but we appreciate uh, having you, Noga. So thank you for taking the time to, to uh, record that performance and sit down with us once again. For sure. For sure. And one of these days we shall do in person when we can have, you know, human beings in the KEXP live room. Listen, Troy, I mean... <laughs> I wanted this session so much, like for so long. I wanted that black studio with those little lights. I mean, that was, that was a vision that I had in my mind. And then, and then when we were starting to talk about, you know, the home session, I was so mm -hmm. extremely excited to be, to be on this, but I was like, can we please postpone it so I can come to Seattle and do it? <laughs> Um, oh, you're you're in, you're welcome anytime. So once once we're able come. to do, <laughs> once yeah, once we're able to do that, believe me, you're gonna you're gonna get an invite real quick. All right.
Yes, cool. but uh, that it, there you go. A uh, fantastic performance uh, from Noga Eras, and uh, we appreciate you and uh, wish you well into the future until we see each other again. Thank you so much, Troy Nelson. I appreciate Absolutely. that. Absolutely. <laughs> yes, that was Noga Erez live on KEXP at home. If you want to say my name properly, would you like that? Oh, it's not Erez? Well, well, um, Americans tend to say Erez because... Right. Well, well, it makes sense because of your language. But actually, in Hebrew, most words are like Erez, like the 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 weight is on the beginning of the word. So if you want to correct that. Erez. Erez, yeah. Okay. God, I've, I've watched multiple <laughs> things. And I was like, well, Jimmy Kimmel like- said Erez. <laughs> Jimmy Kimmel said Erez. And then it's it's a huge joke here in Israel. Like everyone is like, Noga Erez. It's like everyone loves that. <laughs> you can say well, that. I don't you know. Can what- recreate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bl- I blame Jimmy. Um, well, yeah, for sure. Well, okay. All right. Let's, let's just uh, do it again. Erez. Erez. <laughs> this is hilarious. <laughs> I love because this. Because it's so... I swear, I mean, I've heard it. I thought even I've heard well, you say you, it. It's a rolling, if we call it like a rolling mistake, a mistake that you just roll down the line. <laughs> so am I emphasizing the res or the air? <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> the uh, the eh. The air is. Air is. Air is. Yeah, air is. you're emphasizing air. Is. Okay, air is. Air is. Okay, well, it might not be perfect, but it'll be better. How's that? <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> you you also don't have to do it. Like, seriously. This is... Well, people will just laugh again. And it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'll uh, I'll do another little Try. intro. Yeah. And then uh, and we'll pick the best of the two. Okay. All right. Hello, everybody. My name is Troy Nelson. This is live on KEXP at home. We're having a heat wave. <laughs> here in Seattle, but I am feeling so much better because we are with Noga Erez, and uh, thank you so much, Noga, for joining us. <laughs> a little better? <laughs> you did it. <laughs> what? <laughs> what did I do? You did the same thing. Let's, let's... Erez. Er- <laughs> Why is this hard? It's it's because it's so unnatural for, for English to... to you know, emphasize the first um, syllable, I guess. It's, yeah. Erez. Erez. No, it's like Erez. Er, but, but seriously, I really think this is, Erez. this is cool. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I should stop telling oh, people. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no. I'm trying. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. Epic. I, yeah. All the research I've done. And I was like, this is how you say it. And then now I can't like, uh, it's Erez. Well, Erez. Yeah. Erez. It's okay. Okay. Sorry. You can just say Noga Eras and Jim will overdub it. Yeah. Because the microphone okay. is hiding your lips. That's true. So. Noga Eras. All right. Noga Eras. Yeah. Noga Eras. Easy it's enough. Noga Eras. Noga Eras. Noga Eras. Yeah. Is that better? Yeah, it's great. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Sorry. Right. Apologize. No, yeah. it's I'm sorry. I'm the idiot over here. No, I should right, yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> let's move forward. <laughs> oh let's God. just talk about let's yeah. just talk about your last name the whole time. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, is it air or er? Is it res? <laughs> oh my god. Res? High res. Yeah. High res. High res high air high res no high resolution, high resolution. Here with us. <laughs> This is this is what we should put on YouTube. Seriously, this is there you go. Yeah. so much more interesting. <laughs> this is, I'm with I'm with Noga 4K here on uh, yeah. We're it doesn't great, seem like great... it, but this is really high resolution. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't seem like it. No, it looks like we're chatting through a, a Nintendo Game Boy from 1989. Exactly. All right. <laughs> um, <clears throat> okay, so I just have a few questions for yeah. you. And uh, here we go, uh, out of the video. Yeah. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.